Welcome back to part two of how I design a project. Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. In the last episode I took you through my vision for the uh, console project and showed you what I'd drawn up already. In this case it was just the two sides of the console unit. In this episode, I plan to get those cut and then take another look at it and design the next parts of it. Now, since uh, this is for Masso, it only seems fair that I actually get the uh, Masso unit to cut it out for me. Oh, and um, if you're wondering what this is, uh, I'm not actually auditioning for a lead role in the new Iron Man movie. Uh, it's actually just quite cold out here and this is a heated vest. <sighs> Nonetheless, we do need to get this cut because I really want to get this up and running. So without further ado, let's get on with it. So here we are, the pieces that I've cut, and they came out really good. This one here, that's the hole that I'm going to put those uh, jacks coming through, and uh, my connector there for the D25. Now I've figured out what I'm going to use that extra hole for. I'm going to connect up my laser with that. Not a uh, crosshair laser, but uh, an actual engraving laser. So I hope to be able to engrave photos and, uh, of course, uh, just text and that type of thing, line, line drawings. Now this is going to sit here, and uh, as anticipated, my monitor is going to be up here quite a bit higher, but as you can see, my angle is looking good. And uh, what I now have to work out is just how wide I want to make this. So I'm thinking I might just stick with this aluminium plate I have. It's 19 inches wide. I think it's going to be about right for here. It's not much wider than uh, this here, probably about an extra 2, 3 inches um, in width, but it's going to give me the area I need to put all my switches on. So I think uh, the best thing to do is just to use that as my width, and now I need to make the parts that go in between. By doing it in small pieces, you sort of get the confidence that yes, this is looking right, this is uh, how I wish to proceed. And it may seem strange to some people uh, doing it this way. But, uh, of course, I started my woodworking uh, before CNC machines, before computers even, and uh, my plans consisted of a sketch on a piece of paper with maybe a couple of measurements on it, and that was about it. You'd make one part, uh, and you'd slowly build it up as you went. And for these larger projects, I still prefer to do it this way. For the small projects, uh, it's not a problem, but the larger ones, uh, I definitely like to do it... Uh, just a few pieces at a time and build on it from there. And uh, now that I've got the sides done, I've of course gone and drawn those parts in between. Now I had to make a confession here that uh, I'd already had it built and assembled and I took one look at it and I thought, this is a really horrible design. Uh, I've not taken into account that it's not just me that perhaps might be building this uh, because I'm sharing the plans with you guys uh, that uh, maybe you would want to make it and uh, the design I came up with was um, it's just not very good at all not when it came to assembly so for instance when we look here and uh, this is the back panel uh, I'd actually made this I'd machined up four separate pieces which all screwed together to make up that square. Now that was great. I didn't end up with this drop out in the center, so I don't have that waste material. But if somebody else is going to follow on from it, it's just so much more needlessly complex uh, to do. From a one-off uh, project that perhaps I might build myself, yeah, okay. But from uh, for a project that I want to share with you guys, it was just truly horrible. So uh, I went back to literally to the drawing board and redrew it. 
So now the back is one solid piece with the center cut out and uh, having done it with this way as well I can pre-drill the holes in it for my screws. I then went back and made uh, corner sticks here again they're pre-drilled uh, with their holes the holes don't intersect one another so I don't have to worry about screws accidentally coming in contact with one another and it's going to make the assembly just so much easier. The same applies to the front panel and uh, fortunately here I was able to make use of the dropout uh, to machine some other parts. So here's the uh, CAD drawing for it and I've gone through and labeled the parts as well to make it easier to follow. Again they got all the holes but even here uh, I've already made and assembled this one and I've had to come back and uh, make some minor changes to the drawing. So sometimes after I've made a drawing uh, and done the assembly I realized that something wasn't quite right or could be done better and I'll come back and uh, modify the drawings as well. So um, this is basically how I go about designing things, especially these larger projects. They don't always come out perfect the first time. I have to go back and tweak them before I put the uh, drawings up online. But uh, now that I do have the drawings, I've got the parts. Uh, let's go and have a look at the machining of them and more importantly, the assembly of them. Now comes the exciting part, it's time to put it together. As you can see, I've already made a start on it. I've got the back in place along with one of the sides. I've machined out the front piece as well. That'll just sit in here and that's where the monitor will go. In addition to those, I machined out these pieces here, which are the sticks that go in these corners. They're already pre-drilled uh, so that at least one side of them is ready to go to be screwed in place. Now something really important about these is you have to go through and countersink them but not only on the face side it's just as important to countersink them on the back. Why on the back? Well if you've ever tried to screw two pieces of wood together you'll notice it forces them apart. That's because as the screw goes into the second piece it pulls some of that wood out of the surface. By having a countersink on the back, that's where that extra piece of wood from the bottom layer will go and it will not force them apart. The other secret to this is the holes here. These are four and a half millimeter holes and the thread on these here is four and a half millimeters, which means that it can pull up good and tight. If you make these holes too small, you've got two entirely separate threads, you won't be able to pull them together. So that's the secret to using uh, screws on basic wood joinery like this. I'm going to start the assembly by attaching this stick to the side here. And to make sure it's the right distance back, I'm just going to use a piece of offcut, which, or a piece of uh, one of my other sticks, uh, which is the same thickness, to work out exactly where it should sit. I want it to basically just sit flush. That looks pretty good, so I'll put my first screw in here. Now it's also important that you get the right uh, depth screw for these jobs so it doesn't come through to the other side. I can now come down here. That looks pretty good. We'll sit this one here nice and flush. And that looks pretty good. Now 
With that done, I can now screw it in place here. And as you can see, it's come up nice and flush there. If you find it splaying a little bit, you can put this piece here in here and it will act to keep it apart. Now when it comes to mounting the front panel where the monitor is going to go, I'm going to cheat a little bit and instead of putting these sticks onto here first, I'm going to mount these on here and then I'll put it in place. These here, the holes are offset a little bit. If you put it around this way here, the holes will basically end up uh, lining up, or at least this first one will, and you'll probably end up with screws hitting one another. So uh, just make sure which way you align these up. The screws are not going to run into one another. So now with the basic shell of the console built, we need a base. And for that, here's one I prepared earlier. I just put a couple of drawer slides on. Again, same wood that the uh, rest of it's made out of, uh, except this here is I've made 12 millimeter plywood instead of uh, 18. And I just put a nice wooden piece on the front, just so you got a nice front face on it. And that, simply slides in here like this and is a nice fit. That's my sliding drawer. I had originally had planned to have this higher up but due to uh, space constraints I've now had to put it uh, flat on the bottom. In addition to that I machined these pieces here and these go in here like this and that will then allow this piece here to attach along the front edge. Now under here I can put an optional piece of plywood on top just to seal off the area where the keyboard's going to go. So I have here my mini keyboard and mouse so they'll just sit in there and can slide in and out. So far so good this isn't looking too shabby at all. And uh, basically, our monitor can go in here like so. Just put it upside down, it'll hold it about the right height. And my little aluminium plate here with my push buttons on it. And it uh, doesn't look too shabby at all. Just fill in these holes here, give it a paint and a sand, and it'll look quite nice. But I want to go uh, one step further. To that end, I've made this. Basically, it's a piece of uh, quarter inch plywood that I've bent to go around it like so. And then the monitor will go in here again. I'll just put that in upside down. My uh, aluminium plate goes here. And now because this comes down behind it, it pushes it out by quarter of an inch. Which means I can then use this piece I've machined which is also a quarter of an inch, wrong way. and that just sits in the front there again and that just nicely finishes it all off. I'll get this glued in place, maybe a few nails just to hold it. Uh, they may or may not be necessary, I don't know yet. Uh, but this is basically how it's going to look. So, how did I bend this piece of quarter inch ply to go around the top there? Well, when I cut it out, I put some V grooves in it where I wanted to fold it. I had a 60 degree cutter, this angle 63 degrees, I thought it'd be about right, and I made two V cuts half a millimetre apart. That's about 20 thousandth of an inch between V cuts, which made it slightly wider, hopefully giving me enough to bend this here. And when I machined this here out, I machined out these test pieces as well. And the idea is that I should be able to bend it very gently and get the angle. We interrupt this broadcast for a semi-interesting message. 
Here are the parts I machined out of plywood. Well, not actually the back, because I used that signboard, but uh, I think most people would be looking at something like a uh, quarter inch plywood uh, for the back of their unit. And uh, here's the back. I also have the under uh, switch panel that sits under those switches, but above the keyboard. And uh, I'll actually be adding that to mine at uh, some stage before it's finished. I've got that uh, front edge piece here that goes uh, in the front where the drawer slides out and here we have our bent front panel and uh, two uh, test pieces. Now something that's important that I haven't mentioned is the direction of your cut when you cut out those V's in the plywood. Make sure that the cutter is not traveling in the same direction as the plies run uh, on the, the final ply that you're going to leave uh, to be bent. Otherwise, it's just going to snap at that point. You need to be cutting across the fibers when it comes to doing that. Now, if we take a look at uh, where those Vs are, and I'll just zoom in here, you can see that my um, cut consists of two lines. If I'm just running a 60 degree V cutter across those lines, and I'm going down to a depth such that it leaves half a millimetre or 20 thousandths of an inch of plywood uncut. And those two cuts are half a millimetre or 20 thousandths of an inch apart. That provides a little bit of clearance so when it bends there's a little bit of room inside. Okay, uh, let's get back to the workshop. I found that uh, I was getting a little bit of cracking down the edge here, so what I did is when I bent this one here, and I had some great suggestions from uh, people, but uh, in the end I decided I would actually steam it. I put it under a hot kettle, just ran it over the, this groove here, up and down over the steam from a hot kettle, left it there for a little while, and then I gently allowed it to bend and I just put more steam on it and bend it a bit more and just kept going like that and eventually the V here closed up. Once that had happened what I did is I poured super glue into here and uh, glued it shut like that so that it would stay in that shape. So that's how I did that. Now in the drawings I've done uh, I have uh, included the file for that piece if anybody wants to use it and uh, also it includes the test pieces. Even though uh, this one here isn't too bad and a light sand would make it better, this one here had no chipping out on the edges at all uh, where it bent so I was really pleased with how that came out. Okay well onward, now we need to find a way to mount the monitor. When it came to doing the monitor, I had to first remove the base. Now be very careful when you do remove it, because there's a little trick. If you've got a monitor like this anyway, but uh, even if you don't, uh, just be aware that you could have the same issue. There were three screws holding each of these little metal brackets on. And what I found is, if I removed all three screws here, there's a metal plate in behind which would drop down. Luckily I noticed that before it happened because I could see it skewing. So I did as I removed two screws, swiveled it out of position, put a screw back in, removed it, and then put the other two screws back in. So I've left the screws in place here. So that's just something to be aware of, because if that metal plate had dropped down, I probably would have had to crack this thing open and removed it, which I didn't fancy doing. Now on the back here are four mounting screws. So what I did, is I went and got a piece of uh, six millimeter thick, uh, 30 millimeter wide uh, aluminium, and uh, I just drilled holes in it, so I've ended up with this here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount this here in behind, and then I can screw this here up in behind it there, and that will allow me to mount this monitor. I've got uh, two of them because there are four screws, so two here and there. With the monitor put in the right place at the front, I then come around to the back and simply secure the four screws in place and now the monitor is rigidly held where I want it. 
Unfortunately, there's a bit of a gap. It doesn't actually sit flush against the back. That's just the design of the uh, monitor itself. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do about that, if, if indeed anything. Um, I'm just going to see what happens. It may well become a dust trap. I'm not sure. It probably will, actually. But I can't do much about the shape of the monitor. I can't put the monitor in behind because I need access to these buttons on the side. So I'm pretty much stuck with it sitting on the front as it is here. So next, we have a large hole at the back. How am I going to cover that up? So for the back, I've got this here. This is a piece of signboard. It consists of two thin layers of aluminium sandwiched, uh, which sandwiches a piece of uh, PVC plastic in between. And that, when it's in place, will look really good. It'll just sit there like this here, and this here will just come up flush. And I've got a little gap underneath it. Unfortunately, I didn't quite have a piece of board large enough for this project, but I'll make do with what I've got. Now, I'm going to hold these on with uh, four or six screws just, just around it, just to hold it in place. And I'm going to mount my Masso on the back here. But I imagine most people doing it would want to mount theirs inside, in which case uh, an opening door or similar could be put there. There's certainly plenty of room in there to put uh, Masso and some other bits and pieces. But uh, I want to have mine external so that I can video it, and uh, that's why mine's going to sit on the bank. Now, holding the base in place at the moment, it's just sitting there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, screw it in from the sides and some from the back. Now, the screws at the back, I can hide behind that face panel, so that's good, but I can't do anything with the ones from the side. Same goes for this aluminium plate. It's already got large holes in it, so I'm going to put some large screws on it. And my motto here is, if you can't hide something, don't even try. Make it a feature. So what I've done is I've ordered some large furniture screws. They've quite, uh, got quite large heads on them, reasonably low profile. And I'm going to use those on the sides, and I'm going to use them to hold this aluminium plate down at the front. If you try and hide something, it'll look obvious, but if you make it a feature, then it'll look a hell of a lot better. Plus, it gives me the opportunity that I can easily remove the base if I want to get into it that way. Plus, of course, this here will need to come off when it comes to wiring and other things, so there's no way I wanted this here permanently mounted in place either. And that's where I'm going to leave it for this episode. I think I've taken up a, uh, more of your valuable time than I should. And uh, I will get on and just finish up the tidying bits, get this glued in place. And uh, I'm still waiting for those screws to arrive, but uh, I do need to get it painted, so that'll be the other thing uh, I get on with as well. All that remains for me to do is to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out my website, uh, www.cncnuts.com. Uh, follow the link in the description box below. You'll go off to my website where you'll also find the drawings that I'm using to build this here so far. And with that, I'll catch you guys later. Cheers.